and they're out there acting like a bunch of five-year-olds. Yeah. And it's really interesting. I've got uh, a group, uh, you know, I've got a list of about 30 guys that I thought might be fun for us to go through. Sure. That are in, in, uh, in a variety of areas, from NBA to Olympic to Major League to soccer to, uh, you know, uh, execs in, in teams, where they, the stuff they've done has been so boneheaded that you just wonder where they're coming from, all right, and you, and, and you just have to laugh at it. So, you know, I'd like to try to do that to make my point. Would that work for you? Absolutely, Bill. Go for it. All right. Well, in addition to Whitehead, uh, I understand what Whitehead does is, you know, he threatens everybody with violence, all right, and uh, and apologizes but doesn't, you know, doesn't remove the tweets. Uh Uh-huh. All right. right. All right. All right. So we're going to start in the simple game of golf. Steve Elkerson. Back uh, suspended a long, long time ago. Suspended uh, for two weeks and fined ten thousand uh, uh, dollars. And you know, it was just just doing something stupid on the uh, making fun of Michael Sam during the NFL Combine in 2014, okay, which reeked of homophobia. Okay. Mm-hmm. And Michael Sam was the uh, player that was. Uh, you know, gay that came out and got drafted. Right. Okay? Well, Steve, if you don't have anything nice to say, all right, don't say anything. Right. Okay? All right. Now we have the Olympics. I love this one. Michael Phelps. Remember him? Oh, yeah. The Olympic swinger? Uh-huh. Uh, I should say swimmer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, here he is in a pool, sucking on a bone. All right? Well, Kellogg's dropped him. So there's, there's there's your dynamic there of losing major money due to a poor decision on social media. Right. Okay. All right. Then we have um, the uh, Ohio State quarterback, Cardell Jones, oh, yeah. suspended one game. Okay, for some kind of rant on Twitter. Uh, we have Buck Burnett, a Texas offensive lineman, was kicked off the team for racist, racist Facebook about President Obama. Okay? And this goes on and on, so I thought I'd give you a few a, a real other ones. Now you have the media. You can see how this thing is starting to build like a tsunami. Remember Dante defense, the DiVincenzo, the uh, basketball player from Villanova? Yeah, I do. They went after him during the Final Four for uh, racial uh, and homophobic slurs that he did on tweets in 2011 and 2014, a couple of years earlier. Okay, so now you have people piling on because now there's a way to cause attention to yourself and have a political agenda, all right? Because of what somebody did a couple of years earlier, and now it can be magnified during the Final Four. Right. So again, this is just something common sense where people are lack the ability to understand that there's a, you know things are starting to have a political agenda, and we've always had a money agenda involved in these types of things. And people that are experienced and educated know this kind of stuff and know that, you know, hey, look, let's just go play ball and let everything else, you know, what it is we don't need to be pouring gasoline on a situation right now. Okay? Then we have uh, the wide receiver, uh, the coach from Texas A&M, Aaron, um, I won't even say his name, uh, Macklin, uh, going on t- a Twitter rant because two of his players decommit. Okay? Mm. And you just have to laugh at that one. Soccer, you know, the Europeans, my goodness sakes, I mean, you want to talk about homophobia and racism uh, and rants about things. It, you know, it's even worse than the United States. Right. All right, so you look at, you know, those types of things, and, you know, we don't really need to go into it at, at length, but I'll just give you an example of one. Um, see if I can read my own notes here. Um, Switzerland national team uh, player Michael uh, Mc- McNella kicked off the Olympic team uh, for making racist comments against Koreans on Twitter. Okay. Then you always love. Then you love the organizations like the Cleveland Indians where you have a Major League Baseball player, uh, Trevor Bauer, mm-hmm. plays for the Indians, goes on Twitter, and starts to complain.
complain about how he's being restricted from talking on Twitter because of previous um, political tweets that he has made. Right. What is a baseball player talking about politics for? Okay? This is what I'm talking about. The stuff is spiraling out of control. And the pendulum has to get back to the middle because this is just a history of history. Now, I love this one. The Red Sox, the third baseman, Pablo Sandoval, mm-hmm. suspended one game for liking Instagram photos of girls with their tops off. <laughs> and really? then we have, yeah, really. Got Did suspended one Marines game for that? Hater of the Milwaukee so, Brewers had a situation that came uh, about in the All Star game, if I remember correctly, a couple of years ago. And 
thinking you're celebrating a guy like Josh Hader, and all of a sudden all this stuff comes out on a big stage. But I see where you're coming from. Now, you bring up a couple of interesting points. Let me go back on it. Once upon a time, quarterbacks or some players could force their way out of a situation, I'm not going to be here no matter what, blah, blah, blah. They force a trade. Now you bring up something that was never even thought of until you brought it up. But some guys, in a way to avoid playing for a certain team, do these stupid things just to find themselves in a better situation deliberately. That's an interesting That's dynamic. That's what my gut instinct tells me. Huh? That's what my gut instinct tells me. Yeah. I mean, it's, if they're doing it, some are looking good, some are looking bad. So now let me talk about Michael. they don't care because they know they're going to be millionaires. Right. This is what happens when players get a lot of money and they don't have any fear. Right. You know, I mean, you've got a coach at, New England, uh, at the Cleveland Browns right now who is hired to take care of his, uh, uh, you know, starting quarterback. All right, and let Hugh Jackson go. The next thing you know, uh, Baker Mayfield's running his mouth about Hugh Jackson. You know, and he just kind of right. sit back and go, look, uh, you know, you're getting away from everything that needs to be done about football. You know, right. this is this is a, this isn't some soap opera. Right. All right, this is pro- professional football. All right, you know, and we're getting away from all these things. It's turning into entertainment and entertainment tonight. All right, and the pop, you know, what are the next thing? You know, it's bad enough we have all these press conferences. We have a media that hypes the hell out of everything. All right, and now we have social media, which is an accelerator. And I'm going to tell you, it's, it's ruining the integrity of the game. It really is. And people just flat out getting tired of it. Wow. And you even mix that up. You even mix that up with trying to be technically right right now. All right, and I just think that we're going to go full circle with some of this stuff. We're going to have to. Right. Because well, people are just getting bored with it. Let's not lose sight of the fact that one person I try to avoid talking to is impossible with a subject like this. That Antonio Brown social media weighed himself out of the uh, league right now, railroaded himself out. And, and unfortunately, I hate to say this, I rarely ever do this, but you have the President of the United States tweeting big time. Whatever happened to those State of the uh, Union um, addresses versus a guy who's Twitter hunk happy. He's not helping this situation for social media either, Bill. Uh, yeah. Uh, you have to understand something. This, week. this is kind of funny, uh, Scott, you brought this up. Uh, I did a little research on Antonio Brown, okay? Okay. I love one of my Princeton classmates who's a Pittsburgh Steeler, season ticket holder, and goes to all the games. Their son is sitting in the stands with an Antonio Brown jersey on. Mm-hmm. Except the BR is scratched out. He's got a piece of white tape. And he's got CL. So it's this clown on the back of it. Yeah. Instead of brown with his number on it. Uh, now, I'm going to tell you this right now. Uh, I blame Antonio Bryant a lot for what happened to the Steelers organization. Okay? Uh, and, you know, I, I will. This is. This is. This has actually happened to me, which is hard for me to believe. All right, let's see. Let me find my notes here. Okay. All right. Antonio Brown fined $10,000 for streaming a post-game celebration, okay, and capturing Mike Tomlin, referring to the Patriots as those a-holes, okay, mm. In a, in a live Facebook post in 2017. Right, I remember that. Dude, what are you thinking? Right. Seriously, what are you thinking? All right, and I believe before that, uh, he had a, a cell phone where he was recording, a, a, I believe, a halftime deal uh, with the Steelers. And we have to call a grown-ass man in the room. Right. All right, to tell him how to behave with social media, uh, he's not real smart. And I don't care how talented a person is. Right. That can run through a football team and be a cancer in nothing flat. Oh, yeah. All right? And you got to remember something, too. You're talking maybe getting 65 plays in a game or 70 plays in a game. Right. And you're lucky if this guy's going to get 10 touches. Okay. The defense is going to be stacked. So this business about being a diva, hey, the real divas are the running backs. Right. Okay? And so, you know, like Joey Bosa, the music diva. Okay? 
Uh, you know, I mean, I just think that these guys think way too much of themselves and, and forget that this is uh, a team game.